the thing called the equilibrium constant. And this helps us understand that equilibrium doesn't mean that there's the same concentration of reactants as products. It's not that that's an equal concentration. It's an equal rate of reaction for the forward and the reverse reaction once the equilibrium has been established, once we have a dynamic equilibrium. The forward and the reverse reaction rates are the same. Now I can change those for a moment by changing a condition. Temperature, concentration, pressure, those sorts of things. And we've explored those in the last two lessons. Equilibrium constant is either going to be a big number or a very small number. So it's either going to be big as anything bigger than 1 and small as anything between 0 and 1 because it's a fraction. And when I see it written this way, it makes no sense to me at all. So I'm going to use today's experiment to help you get your head around what the heck this means. What this is saying though, just quickly, is A moles of capital A plus B moles of capital B, so whatever molecules or ions or whatever they might be, are in an equilibrium system with C moles of capital C plus D moles of capital D. Today what that meant was we had an equilibrium system where we had two moles of NO2 in an equilibrium system with one mole of N2O4. Okay, so the little letters become numbers, so exponents to the power of, in other words, and the big letters become molecules or ions or compounds. Okay, so that's what they really mean. So for today we were looking at molecules that were in equilibrium together and they were a gaseous system. So we had NO2, which would be our A or our B, which means it has to be on the bottom. And there are two moles of them, so I write NO2 to the power of 2. The square brackets in this mean concentration of, so how many moles per litre there are of them. Because in our experiment we were looking at what happened to the concentration, did it go up when we changed something, or did it go down? And that will have an effect on this fraction, whether it gets closer to zero or closer to infinity. This one here is your N204, because there's no number in front of it, it means that we don't put any exponent here. It's just its concentration. So the concentration of this divided by the concentration of this squared will give us our equilibrium constant. And for your information, in the one that we were doing today, when it was really dark brown, it was probably a very, very little number. And when it was nearly colourless, it was a very, very big number. So it changes depending on how you set up the equilibrium. What you need to be able to do is to have a look at any changes to the K value, KC value, when, for example, you've got a change in pressure or temperature, and say, right, what does this mean? What it means is if the KC value gets bigger after you've done something, it means you've made more of the products. Because the number on the top, sorry my maths isn't good enough to remember what that's called properly, but the number on the top has got bigger and the number on the bottom has got smaller. Okay? That means the forward reaction has been favoured until a new equilibrium has been established. If the KC value drops when you change something, then it means you've got more reactants, because it means the number on the bottom must be bigger, which means there must be a smaller concentration of products and a bigger concentration of reactants. It is that calculating it given the concentrations, so you would be given some numbers to plug in there, and you'd have to know whether to square them or to the power of three or the power of four or whatever. It is calculating them that you have to be able to do. So that's one thing you have to be able to do is calculate cal KC. So that's one of the skills you need. And the other skill is to, if you're told the KC values and told what effect they've done, say heating it up, to link it to Le Chatelier's principle. Link a change in KC to And I'm going to give you some worksheets for that tomorrow to work through so you can get your head around what those sorts of questions look and feel like and how to answer them effectively. Any questions on that? Because it is just a, the last little bit of learning you really need to know from me before you're ready to put it all into practice through questions and applying it to some case studies tomorrow.